that we can go through them on the board. So this, the first exercise was just to give you a feel of the sequential reactions that are going on just by designing the chain. So what you should uh, notice on this one is that you got the start, oh, sorry, activating the pen. So you got the starter unit here, and then you got three extender units. So this is acetyl coenzyme A, and this is malonyl coenzyme A. So what happens is that you got your starter unit, and then you got the extender unit with the acid group sitting out here on the edge. And what I usually do is that I draw this helper line just to see where is the carbon bond actually formed. And the electrons that we use to make this bond, it comes from uh, getting decoupling, yeah, yeah. Cleave getting, off, cleave off cleaving off car uh, carbon dioxide. So here you got the electrons moving in here, and these electrons from this bond here, those are the ones that are used to form this bond. And then you got the electrons moving out on the oxygen. And then you got the methyl group here sticking out. You got your oxygen now with a charge. You got your acetyl coenzyme A. And then you got your extender unit down here with that carbon here, a carbonyl, and another acetyl coenzyme A. Then you reform the double bond and have a good leaving group with acetyl coenzyme A. And this is why you get your product. So this is what repeats several times. So these two carbons, those are the ones that are coming from the starter unit. And these two carbons here are the ones coming from the extender unit. So this is what happens three times. So I hope that all of you got a chance to practice that. The next exercise is the early stages of retrosynthesis. So we want you to recognize the original polyketide chain. In this case, it's given for you. But to recognize the reactions coming from that chain to the free products below. And that has all everything to do with folding of that chain. So one chain can give three different products. So the principle behind this type of exercise is to recognize this beta pattern of carbonyls, so uh, oxygens on every other uh, carbon. So start out by saying, I can recognize these two from, from this chain up here, every other, but there should have been one here, and there should have been one here as well, because we got four carbonyls up here. So what you do is that you draw this a beta keto chain in the shape of that molecule you want to form. In this case, you got a methyl group here. Don't forget that one, it's the same up here. So you fold that chain to resemble that one here. So you got the methyl group, then you got the imaginary carbonyl sitting here, another imaginary carbonyl. Then you got one here that's turned into a hydroxy group. And then you got that one down here. And then instead of this oxygen, you have your acetyl coenzyme A. So this is the same chain, just folded like, like this molecule down here. And then you look at where the carbon bond is formed. So you can make this helper line here. And that means that you have a nucleophilic attack up here, charge moving out here, 
But then if you want to move that charge back in to reform the double bond, you need a good leaving group. And in this case, you got a methyl group. And methyl group is not a good leaving group. So in this case, you got an aldol condensation. So you have an intermediate where you form an alcohol. So alcohol. And then you do the same thing for the two others. You recognize that here all four oxygens are intact. One, two, three, four, matching the every other carbon pattern. In this case, you have this carbon bond formed, which means that you have this carbon reacting to, to uh, the carbonyl that has been sitting down here. And in that case, you had formed the ring directly because you had acetyl coenzyme A leaving, so this is a Gleisen condensation. Again, every other, there should have been one here, bond formed here. You have this carbon reacting to this imaginary carbonyl up here, but you only have a methyl group here, bad leaving group, so this is an aldol. This was fast for the two last ones, but I hope that you all had a chance to do at least some of these. Questions? Yeah? Not yet. Not yet. So right now it's just, you know that it has to be on every other. So there's, originally there's been one, and Thomas will continue the lecture of how to get rid of uh, ketone groups in a while. So, but it tells you something about the complexities of these enzymes because you got the same chain that you can fold and you can remove carbonyls and make oxygens and double bonds however you want and that's all encoded in the enzymes. So they are very complex and very specific in their reactions. Good. Then we have a similar a similar exercise here, recognizing the every other pattern. And always just start where you feel the most comfortable because there will always be positions where you might be a little bit in doubt. But sometimes when you get started on the retrosynthesis, it will work, work out later. So how does the original polyketone ketide chain look like? This is definitely one. And then you got every other. So there should be one here, that's the one sitting here. Every other, there's my uh, imaginary one here that matches the one sitting here. Every other here, every other here. And then you have an ester bond formed here. So this is where the ring has been made. So when you open up the chain, it looks something like this. See if I can actually manage to get it within the slide. And then you should have had one here. That one is that one down here. Oops, sorry. That carbonyl is the one here. And that means that's the end of the chain, so the acetyl coenzyme A should be here. It can't be up here because then we got additional two carbons here, so if acetyl coenzyme A would have been sitting here, then we would have been lacking two, two carbon groups. Then we start with the highlighter. Because the starter unit will be in the end furthest away from the acetyl coenzyme A. And we usually, when I say usually, we have acetyl coenzyme A. In this case, we actually have a bigger group sticking out here. But then we got one here, one here, 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 here. So, 
We got our starter unit here. Uh oh. And then you got one, two, three, four, five, six extender units of malonyl coenzyme A. <clears throat> then we ask what type of polyketide we're dealing with. Then you basically just count the carbonyls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a heptaketide. Questions? Hmm? So, what is the structure of the extender unit in this particular molecule? Yeah. Is that not complicating? This? Yeah. So, in this case, you can say you got the extender unit with two Cs, but in fact, you got a methyl group sticking out here at all the positions. Matching these positions here. So in fact, instead of malonyl A, which is which would look like this, you actually got an extra methyl sticking out. So your extender unit is actually looking like this. Hmm? Yeah. Yes. Thank you. So your extender unit got an extra methyl group sitting out here. <clears throat> then we want you to, for these more complex molecules, find the original polyketide chain. Tell us what the building blocks are, what starting units, and what ring closing mechanisms have been used for these. And it's the same principle again you recognize the pattern of beta keto groups and you always start where you feel the most secure. So if you have doubt, you can wait for that to later. But this is very characteristic here on every other, every other. Then you got one here and you got an oxygen here, which means that you got an imaginary one sitting here and an imaginary one sitting here. So if you try to figure out how the original chain looked like, <clears throat> you draw it in the shape of the molecule. So you do like this. This is the carbonyl up here, down here. Then you got a carbonyl that's used to close this ring. And then you got a methyl group sitting down here, which is the one sitting here now. <clears throat> from this position, which is here, the chain folds in like this. And this is the tricky part about this one, because it's not always folding up to make easy six-membered rings. The, the enzyme can fold that chain however it likes to make every shape of molecule. So you got this carbon here, this carbon here, which had carbonyl sticking on, every other, this is the carbonyl here, every other up here, here, and then you got the last carbonyl here. And this is the end of the chain. You got the methyl group down here, you need that one, which means that acetyl coenzyme A must, must be sitting up here. Then you have three different rings formed. You got one formed up here, an ester bond. Then you got the one down here and the one down here. So you got two CC bonds and one CO. The two CC bonds, the first one, this is the two carbons that we want to connect. If we want this carbon to react up here, electrons to move up here and back in, we don't have a good leaving group because we got the methyl group sitting out here, so this must be an aldol closing mechanism. The other ring 
this, this bond formed here. This is between this carbon here and this carbon here, which means we got the nucleophilic attack in here, charge moving out here. We don't have a good leaving group that can be removed if we want to move the charge back in here. So this is also an aldol. Oh. Uh oh, I have to push the right buttons. <laughs> aldol. Hmm? And in this case, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbonyls. So it's a hepta. If you want to, you can highlight the building blocks and you start from the end with the starter unit furthest away from acetyl coenzyme A. So that's down here. Then you got one unit here, one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here. So in this case, we don't have any unusual extender units or starter units. We have an acetyl coenzyme A down here. And then we got six malonyls. So one acetyl and six malonyl. Yeah? How do That is by ester formation. So in this case, you need uh, an alcohol to form, and that requires a reduction, and Thomas will... will elaborate on that in a while, but that is a usual ester formation. So there will be a base somewhere in the system drawing away an electron so that this oxygen here can react up here. Yep. But Thomas will give a, a more detailed example of that. For the other one, do that one here. Same principle. Recognize the pattern every other. Start with where you feel the most comfortable. Here, pretty sure about that, pretty sure about that. Also sure about that. Should be one here, one here, one here. We got one intact, one here. Should be one here. And then we got one here, and then we got a methyl group. Don't forget these methyl groups down here. It's not just because chemists are sloppy, but usually the end of a line is not just the end of a line, but a carbon. So you can do the same thing. Running out of space, I should have made <laughs> empty slides. Draw the ones where you feel the most comfortable. This is the one down here. The ones that attack down here. One here, one here, methyl group still here. Then we're back to this carbonyl here, that one here, and then we need that methyl group up here. That means that this is the end of the chain. This is where we got the acetyl coenzyme A. So this is what the original chain looked like. Again, start furthest away from the acetyl coenzyme A. This is where you got your starter unit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And you also have all the annotation for the solutions that go through here. And I upload them, hopefully. So in this case, you got one acetyl. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight malonyl. So this is a nona ketide, but nine carbonyls. We got two different rings formed. We got this aromatic ring system where we got the bond formed here. And then we got the big macrocyclic ring here, which is an ester again. The ester. Thomas will return to that. For the aromatic ring system, this requires that these two carbons are connected. This carbon here will react uh -oh, on the carbonyl. 
charge moving out here. We don't have a good leaving group because that's this huge big chain. This is an aldol. Closing. Questions? And that was it. Yeah? Not connected to this. Could you maybe upload on campus and some extra exercises on this so we can yeah. this more? Yeah. But there'll be more exercises after Thomas's lecture will you repeat some of the same things. And the point is that it's overwhelming at first, but it's the same type of reactions that you'll go through every time. So the more chance you get to practice yourself, and you will get there, I promise. Yeah. Should we have a five-minute break or something like that? Until quarter past three.